Straightallday.com. You are now tuned in to the best show out. This is the one where you learn the discipline of showing up day after day to do the work, the confidence, the discipline to show up day after day to do the work, the confidence to put yourself out there boldly and authentically, and the mental toughness to continue showing up, doing the work, putting yourself out there, even when the success you've expected to achieve is nowhere to be found. File a missing persons report for that success because it ain't nowhere, it ain't where it's supposed to be. But on top of all that, you get even more. You get this personal initiative. This is that go getter energy that moves us to go make things happen instead of waiting for things to happen. When we're tired of just sitting around hoping and wishing for something to happen, we just go make it happen. We call that personal initiative. You want to get that too. And we put all this together. What you get is the mindset, the method, the podcast, the book. If you don't have a book, go get it. It's called Work on Your Game. My name is Dre Baldwin, also known as Dre All Day. Welcome to the show. Today's topic is when to ignore what you know. Yes, when to ignore what you know. Now, this, this topic is a little bit uh, counterintuitive for some of us because how many years did you invest in school? How much money did you invest in school? I mean, you go to school to get new information, right? To get new knowledge, you go, and then you go out into the world and you apply what you learn, you apply that information. Even if you didn't go to school, you go apply the things that you've learned, you do them, and the more you do them, the more knowledge that you have. Because you went and did that activity, now you know what it's like. You've experienced it. Uh, you get knowledge through experience. But I'm telling you here today that there are times you should completely ignore the things that you know from your experience, from your investments, from your information, from all the things that you've read and watched and heard from other people. There are times you should completely ignore everything that you know. Today's show is about wisdom. And wisdom is not the same as knowledge. It's not the same as information. See, knowledge are the things that you know, the stuff that you've done. Wisdom is the discernment of when to apply what knowledge and when not to. That's what wisdom is about. So it's not just about having more information than the next person because we can all get information from Google, but not everybody is smart. All right, not everybody can, is successful. Not everybody's doing the things that they want to do, even though we all have access to all the information anytime we want. And Google is literally free to use. So why aren't, why isn't everybody successful? Why isn't everybody smart? Why isn't everybody doing what they want to do? Because not everybody is wise. Wisdom is the discernment of understanding like, okay, here's 10 different pieces of information. Here's the one piece that I need right now. Here's the one piece that I'm going to need tomorrow. Here's the piece that I needed last week. And here's how I'm going to combine these three pieces for what I'm going to need a month from now. And you know what? This next thing that I'm doing, I don't need any of this information. I need a completely new piece of information. But you got to be willing to ask the right question to find the right piece of information. See, it used to be a time when information was the thing we were looking for. If someone gave you the right information, you can get the outcome. Now, it's being wise enough to understand which piece of information is the most important one because not all the information, like not like all the information is not exactly what you need now. All right, now you got to sift through the information and figure out which piece matters the most right now, which piece is going to matter the most tomorrow because the answers are not going to be exactly the same. That wisdom is the key to getting ahead in the world that we're in now. It's not just having the information, it's not just knowing the people, it's not just being able to Google things, because if that's what it was, again, everybody would have what they want. But since most people still don't have what they want, now it's the discernment. Knowing when you're looking at 20 different pieces of information, which is the one that you actually need right now? Which is the one you're going to need tomorrow? And which ones should you ignore and why? You need to know why you're doing these things, not just doing them to be doing them. Point number one, today's topic is when to ignore what you know. First time you ignore what you know is when you trust your instinct and conviction more than you trust your conscious mind and the information that is placed in front of you. See, businesses, they'll usually poll their customers, right? A a smart business person, notice the wording I'm using, a smart business person who has all the information and has some knowledge, what they'll do is they'll go talk to their customers. They'll talk to their clients. They'll talk to people who have dealt with them in the past. People who have bought from them, people who like their stuff, maybe people who didn't like their stuff. And they'll ask them and they'll try to figure out what those people want. And then they go make it and then they go sell it. What do you want? How can I help you? How have I helped you in the past? What's the biggest challenge you're dealing with right now? If I could do one thing to help you right now, what would it be? And they get all that information from their consumers, directly from their clients. They figure out what's the best thing they can do right now. Then they go make that thing and then they go sell it. That's just smart business. Okay, I'm not being facetious here. This is what many business people do. This is what I've done many times. All right, this is smart business. That's traditional, it's smart, and it works. Henry Ford, however, And Henry Ford, if you don't know, he's the guy who created the Ford Motor Company way back. 
way back when, before any of us was alive. Henry Ford said, he once said that if I went and did that, if I went and asked the people what they actually wanted, you know what they would have told me? They would have told me they want a faster horse. Because see, Henry Ford created the, he basically created the American automobile industry. There were no cars, or at least they weren't mainstream when Henry Ford started doing what he was doing. People were getting around in a horse and buggy, if you can believe that. That's how people got around. You had a horse which pulled your carriage. There were a couple horses that pulled your carriages to get you from point A to point B, to get you to the grocery store, or to get you to your cousin's house. You had a horse and buggy. Henry Ford said, if I would have asked people what they wanted, they would have said, we want a horse that can go a little bit faster. Henry Ford decided that I'm not going to ask the consumers what they want because they don't even know what they want. I know what they want. They need a vehicle. They need an automated vehicle. It's called an automobile because back then with horses, it was a, it was a manual mobile. All right? It took humans or a horse mobile, whatever you call that, equestrian mobile. I don't even know what you call it. Henry Ford created the automobile, so it automatically became mobile. All right, that's where the word came from. Turn the key or you get the, the gas engine going or whatever that setup was back then for the contraption, which many people call his cars when he was working and failing to create that automobile. We got to create this automated thing that gets us from point A to point B. That's what people actually need. They don't know they need it, but once they see it, they're going to know they need it. Steve Jobs, who created the device or he created the company that created the device on which you're listening to this podcast or browsing the internet right now, most of you, Steve Jobs thought the customer was stupid. Steve Jobs actually believed it. He said, the customers are idiots. They don't know what they want. You need to tell them what they want. Don't ask them. They don't know. You got to tell them what they want. And Steve Jobs is right. I think if you look at your, your Mac computer or your iPad tablet or your iPhone smartphone. I think Steve Jobs is pretty right about people not knowing what they wanted until he presented it to them. Nobody told Steve Jobs we need a, a phone that is the internet and a phone and an iPod all in one. Steve Jobs came up with that idea. Nobody was asking him to do that. He decided that's what the people need. And they, he was right. He and Henry Ford were both right. So if and when you ignore what you know, here's the key thing. You better be right. Now, I told you many episodes ago that about betting on yourself. You know, people always use this phrase, you gotta bet on yourself. You wanna be, succeed in life, you gotta bet on yourself, right? Bet on yourself so you can win and succeed in life. Understand that when you bet on yourself, you can still lose. All right, you can go to Las Vegas and bet all you want. That doesn't mean you wanna make any money. When you bet on yourself, you gotta win. Both Henry Ford and Steve Jobs bet on themselves and they were right. They were both wrong many times too. And we don't, people don't talk about that in their books and in their you know, documentary series. We don't laud them for their failures, but we talk about the times that they were correct. Their successes rendered the failures non-stories because they were successful. So if you bet on yourself, you better make sure that you're right. You better make sure that you win. Make sure that you win. So this first point is when you trust your instinct and convention more than you trust the information. Point number two. And actually talking on that subject of instinct and convention, my book, Work On Your Game, which is using a pro athlete mindset to dominate your game, business, sports and life. We talk about following your instinct, talk about following your conviction, especially when the information or the reality or the, the practical knowledge out there tells you that what you're thinking of or what you're trying to do is not going to work at all. There are times when you need to ignore that and go with your gut. But again, you got to make sure that you hedge that bet and make sure that you win. This is exactly what I did to create a career in professional basketball. And again, that's in my book, Work On Your Game. You can get that at dreallday.com slash order, O-R-D-E-R, or go on Amazon. Point number two, today's topic is when to ignore what you know. You ignore what you know when traditional processes and actions are not working. There's a guy by the name of Dick Fa Fallsbury, or Richard Fallsbury, they call him Dick. Dick Fallsbury, he was a high jumper. And before he was able to, before anybody knew what his name was, Mr. Fosbury knew that there were three different ways to clear a high jump bar. Any of you ever seen someone high jumping in track and field? There were three different ways to do it. Mr. Fosbury was trying. He was, a, he was an okay high jumper. He wasn't that great. He wasn't, nobody was calling him world class or anything like that. He was just okay. He was a high jumper, but it, it was nothing special about him. Of these three ways, these traditional methods for clearing a high jump bar, all of them were designed for an athlete to jump over the bar and then land on his feet. You would jump over and land on your feet. That was just what made sense back then. Any of you seen a high jump these days, a modern high jump, you know, nobody lands on their feet. They had this big padded mat, right? That you can just flop down on once you 
clear over the bar or if you don't clear over the bar. But the way back then was for everybody to land on their feet. Dick Fosbury decided to try a new technique and he wasn't going to win because he knew that he couldn't win using the traditional methods. That's the point that I'm making here. When the traditional processes and traditional actions are not producing the results that you want, you may have to go against the grain of what's traditional because the traditional is not going to work for you. You may not be good enough to win traditionally, so you might have to do something a little bit different. He, didn't, he knew he couldn't win using traditional methods, so he started doing something different. He jumped over the bar backwards. <laughs> he, came, he came at an angle towards the bar, and then he would leap and arch his back in such a way that he would clear over the bar by going over the bar backward. If you don't, I can't really explain this in words any better than what I'm doing right now. So go online and look up a high jumper. You can look up Dick Fosbury and you'll see a picture of what he did. Nobody had done that before he did. And when he first started jumping this way, this, this flop method, he basically flopped over the bar, but he jumped over it. He cleared it. Technically, he did clear it. Coaches... His coaches, other coaches, rival players, rival track and field athletes, the media, they all criticized Dick Fosbury and they start calling him lazy. They said this is a lazy approach to high jumping. I mean, you're landing on your back. You're kind of flopping over the bar. You're not really jumping over it. That's what people said when he started doing this. And they start calling it the Fosbury flop. And again, go watch any high jumper. Everybody uses it today. Today, this is the normal method. This is the normal process. This is the traditional thing today. To most high jumpers never knew anything other than this. When you use the same techniques, this is the point. When you use the same techniques that everybody else is using, you're in a skills competition. And sometimes other people are just more skilled than you. Sometimes other people are just better than you. So using traditional knowledge is going to get you beat if you're not the best when it comes to skill. That's when you don't use what you know. That's when you might have to say, no, let me try a different method. Because if I do what everybody else is doing, listen, he's more skilled than me. She got more skill than me. He's been in the game longer than me. He has more talent than me. There's no way I'm going to win if I go to traditional method because they're using the traditional method and they're just better at it than me. There are sometimes in life people, we just got to admit that other people are better than us using a certain method. So we got to use a different method. But again, as I talked about in yesterday's episode, in order for you to even apply this, you got to be willing to ask yourself a better question. Dick Fosbury, listen, he wasn't the first high jumper to come around and notice, you know what? All these other high jumpers are better than me. He wasn't the first person to realize that, but he was the first person to ask himself a better question and say, how about I use a different technique? What if I use a different technique than everybody else? Since I'm not going to beat them going there. If I try to do what they're doing, they're going to beat me because they're better at the game than me. How about I do something different? That was the better question he asked himself. Now, I'm sure that answer did not just come to him immediately. He had to try some different things. Maybe it came to him in the shower. Maybe it woke him up out of a dream. I don't know. But he had to be willing to ask himself the better question. Most of us, when we find ourselves in a stuck, quote unquote, position where other people are more skilled than us and the traditional methods of getting things done are not quite working the way that we want them to work, we either A, quit or B, try to work harder at doing the exact same thing that already isn't working. That's what 99% of us do 99% of the time. The exact same thing that already isn't working or we just completely give up and decide that it's not going to work for us. How about you ask yourself a better question? What if I did things differently? What if I just changed one element of this? What if I did things just a little bit different than what everybody else is doing? Yes, there's going to be criticism. Yes, you're going to get funny looks. Yes, it might not even work. But we know that the way that you've been doing it ain't working, so you might as well try something different. Are you courageous enough? Are you confident enough in yourself to even allow yourself to think that, let alone do it? Point number two. Point number three, rather. Today's topic is when to ignore what you know. You ignore what you know when you know something else that works better. <laughs> Isn't that a simple, simple enough point? If there's something out there that works better than what you already know, you should probably employ that thing. Again, you got to be confident enough, courageous enough to look at the thing that you've been doing, look at the thing that everybody else is doing, look at the thing that people expect you to do, look at the thing that's traditional and accepted and say, you know what, I'm not going to do it this way because I know a better way. And a lot of people aren't willing to do that even when they know a better way because you know what happens when you do things different from everybody else. You get funny looks, you get criticized, you get attacked, you get some people may want to sabotage you just because you're doing different than everybody else. But you got to be confident enough in yourself and mentally tough enough to do it anyway. You know, the, phrase, the saying goes, winners never quit and quitters never win, right? And that cliche is mostly true. It's also true that it's stupid to persist in something that you're not seeing a future in and you aren't excited about in the process. All right, they're both true. And this is what this is the height of wisdom right here. It is smart to believe 
that you can't quit and win and that you can't win and quit. It's smart to believe that. All right, that's traditional knowledge is a cliche. It's a cliche because it's based in truth. But it's also smart to believe that if you're persisting at something in which you don't see a future for yourself and you're not excited about the process, it'd be stupid to keep doing it. That's also smart. That's also true. It's not cliche, but it's also very true. So see, wisdom is understanding which one of these you need to apply to what you're doing and which one you should ignore. And the 48 Laws of Power, my favorite book of all time, author Robert Greene has a chapter called Entering Action with Boldness. That if you're gonna do anything, do it as boldly as you can possibly do it. You know, stick your chest out, be ambitious about it, be courageous about it, have that chutzpah, you know, put yourself out there audaciously because people will move out of your way. People will do what you say do. People will go where you say go. People will allow you the space to do whatever it is you want to do when you enter an action boldly because we can feel people's energy coming off them without them saying a single word. This is very true. Everybody here knows this. But Robert Greene also has a chapter in the exact same book, the exact same book that says use a surrender tactic when you're the weaker person in a, in a situation. So there's one chapter where he says, if you're the weaker person, use boldness because boldness will put people on their heels. It'll back them up. It'll move them out, out of your way and it will let you do whatever it is you want to do. And then he turns around and says, if you're the weaker person in the situation, use the surrender tactic. Surrender to that person. Show them that you're weaker than them. Show them that you're not trying to fight them. Show them that you're not a threat. Show them that you're willing to go along with whatever they want. Those are two completely opposite ideas two completely opposite pieces of advice and direct conflict with each other in the same book which one is true which one should you apply both of them see your wisdom tells you which one to apply and which one to ignore and when see this you can't get that on google so you can't get that just by reading every single book and saying all right i'm gonna just apply everything that i heard you can't get that just from listening to every podcast or watching every youtube video or subscribing to every email list see this is wisdom and this comes from experience and or from learning from someone who understands it already taking two conflicting pieces of information and knowing when to apply which one and when to ignore the other one this is when you ignore what you know when you know something better when you know something that makes more sense for this particular situation, you can come back to the thing that you ignored. Just because you ignored it today doesn't mean you got to ignore it tomorrow. Tomorrow it might make sense to use that information. But today it makes sense to use a different piece. And the day after that, it might make sense to use neither one of those and do something completely different from everything. Let's recap today's topic, which is when to ignore what you know. Today's show, as I said already, is about wisdom, which is not the same as knowledge. Knowledge is the things that you know. Wisdom is your ability to discern. That's the key word, discerning. When to apply what knowledge and when not to. Point number one, when you trust your instinct and convention, you should ignore what you know. See, a business will poll customers and talk to their past clients and ask them what they want. Then they go make it. Then they go sell it. That's traditional. It's smart and it makes sense and it works. But there was a guy named Henry Ford, another guy named Steve Jobs, who both said, no, I'm not going to ask the customer what they want because what the customer wants is not really what they need. I'm going to go make what they need. Then I'm going to show it to them and then they're going to want it because they didn't know it existed before. So there's no way they could tell me that they want it. And both of those guys were right. So if and when you ignore what you know, you better be right. You're betting on yourself. You better win. All right. Betting on yourself alone doesn't mean anything. You can lose all your money betting on yourself. OK, and you've been in Atlantic City or Vegas or there's a lot of places you could bet now. You can lose everything betting on yourself. All right, you got to bet on yourself and win. All right, it's not just doing the bet. You got to be successful in those bets. Point number two, when traditional processes aren't working, Dick Fosbury, he knew that he wasn't going to win doing a traditional high jump because everybody else is better than him. But he said, what if I do something different? He was willing to ask himself a better question. He came up with a better answer, a better technique, and then he beat everybody else. And now everybody in the world uses his technique because he was courageous enough and mentally tough enough to use a different technique, knowing he was going to be criticized, knowing he would be attacked, knowing he would be ridiculed for it. He did it anyway. It worked. And now everybody's following his lead. Point number three, when well, you know something that works better, they say that winners never quit and quitters never win. This is cliche and it's mostly true. That's why it's a cliche. It's also true that it's dumb to persist in something that you're not seeing the future in and you're not excited about. Which one is the right one to apply for you? It depends on the situation. Again, your ability to discern will help you figure that out. Robert Greene said interaction with boldness. In a different chapter in the same book, he said use a surrender tactic when you're weak in another person. Which one is right? They're both right. Your wisdom, your ability to discern tells you which one to apply and which one to ignore and when to apply which one and when to ignore the other one. Let's talk about what's going on in the game group. Ladies and gentlemen, what we talked about here today, the game group is all about this. It's about understanding when to apply what information. The information is out there. Everyone has access to Google. 
You listen to this podcast every single day. The information is out there. The things are out there. The what to do is out there. Even some of the how to do is out there. But is it, does that how to do apply to your particular situation? Are you applying the how in the right way? Are you applying the how at the right time? Are you applying the right how to the right problem? Are you asking yourself the right questions? Are you coming up with the right answers? Are you applying the right answers? Because you may get more than one answer. Which answer are you applying in what way? See, the game group is all about the strategies that produce results, not just the information, not just the how and the what, but also the why and the when. Those, those matter very much to what you're doing in life be simply because we got a limit of time, if only for one reason, because we got a limit of time. If you waste your time applying the wrong what and the wrong how and the wrong when for the wrong why, you're gonna waste some time. And by the time you come back around to the beginning again, the opportunity that you were looking for may be gone. So in the game group, it's four specific areas you focus on personal development, business growth and development, basketball skill development and professional basketball careers. You're getting the strategies that lead to the results. The right questions will be posed to you. The right answers will be available to you. And the application of those answers is not just having the answers, but it's applying the answers in the right way at the right time for your particular situation. In the forum, I'm answering questions, I'm handling challenges, I'm asking you questions in, in return, and you get to deal and see with other people who are, you get to deal with and see other people who are in the same boat, dealing with similar challenges, maybe in a different category, but you may find an idea that can work for and apply to you. That's all in the game group. That's at dreallday.com slash membership. Work on your game. Dre all day.